Recently, I've been covering the Gypsy Rose Blanchard story, and I have recently done coverage where I have taken a slight turn and angle and focused on the ex-boyfriend, Nick, who unalived her mother, Dee Dee. New information has come out about him and his mental status. So if you have not seen my videos regarding that, please go check them out. And unfortunately, due to the, uh, I should say, darkness of the whole topic, it isn't promoted as much on YouTube. So if you do um, feel that it is an important thing to spread awareness about, or you do feel that it would be good for more people to see this side and angle of things, please do me a favor and give me a like and thumbs up. And you know, you could also leave a comment and tell me even if you don't agree. Please be advised this video is for entertainment or educational purposes. It also contains opinions and speculations regarding topics that have been discussed in media and print. Please always do your own research to make and come to your own conclusions. Now let's get back to the video. Bobby Goodjohn, Nick Gypsy Rose Blanchard's ex-father, took to the internet to update those in support of his son regarding the process they are dealing with as they try to appeal the situation and life sentence that Nick has been given for unaliving Gypsy's mother, Dee Dee. Nick received a letter that documented the state's briefing explaining why they do not feel the court should approve or accept his appeal nor the testimony of a doctor that was submitted. The doctor has, according to the father, an extensive medical background as a neuro neurologist specializing in ASD. And when conducting interviews, evaluations, and conversation, it was the first time Nick claims he has ever felt completely understood and he wishes that the specialist would be allowed to sh be shared with the state so the reason why an appeal should be at least looked into would have some backing by this doctor sadly the courts were to say they were not impressed so therefore not convinced this is absolutely shocking and appalling to me as many things have changed in the past few years with new understanding and studies of the truth and details of mental health and autism. This young man is entitled to at least an appeal regarding that, I feel, and to be seen with a fresh pair of eyes and better understanding and knowledge of such a situation as his. In the original case, they do not go into important details and never had much evidence or an argument to explain the diagnosis and behaviors that Nick struggles with on a daily basis by an expert or, um, you know, a specialist of ASD. Now, why this is so crucial and important to have is because it is fair to have someone knowledgeable in this topic to express why it had played a key role in the relationship between Nick and Gypsy. Seeing all sides and angles is always needed, and it wasn't really done. Now, this is a high concern and makes sense, as he was a, and still is, a subjectable person to such manipulation and conditioning. When a person is to approach with kindness and makes him feel loved, or praised if said person was to be asked to do something it would usually be responded to by a short quick decision with not really a lengthy normal thought process before acting it out and doing something for someone to be accepted appreciated 
and to feel accomplished. The lack of being able to properly deliberate something can be also seen as not being in a clear mental state of mind. So typically, most individuals that suffer with, say, TBI, uh, traumatic brain injuries, or other mental issues, they can and tend to take statements, reactions, and words literally and straight to the definition without again any thought to it at all therefore when gypsy had told him she was afraid of her mother and that unaliving her mother would be the only way for them to see and be with each other he needed to do it seeing it was a demand and an urgent thing it needed to happen she also would tell him that her mother Dee Dee hated him forbidden them that they talk or see each other anymore as well as that she was ever to be caught with him or talk to him anymore she would be dead or she would say like my mother will you know unalive me again a possible situation to nick taking things literally without any thought to it this might be to some sounding like you know, an scapegoat, like, reason or cause. But you really got to see it from a, a different view and health angle, honestly, in this situation. I think <sighs> working in that field in the past, I could see it right away with a few things so it takes time but it also takes a very open mind and open heart to also understand it so he had been proven to be in the need of her approval and worthy of her love like it's it's very documented he was willing to do anything for her and anything she asked. Now, the specialist being requested to testify and make an impact was in high hopes for the family, as it could be made clear as a connection with how Nick could be impaired in social cues and how to appropriately respond to them. Nick's father remains positive, stating in a post to social media that this is just another delay, but it doesn't really mean it's bad news. He did ask to please keep the prayers going and well wishes coming their way, especially in the form of that his rebuttal is to hopefully be accepted. Those who are looking to help Nick and his father, there are a couple things you can do. In regards to Nick and his situation, you could write a letter to the Missouri State Governor, Michael L. Farson, the Office of the Governor, as well as Missouri Protection and Advocacy Services. I will list all the addresses and public information down below if you are interested. Look, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. A part of my heart feels for him. I've seen many individuals like him in home programs where they're safe and the community is safe. There's 24-hour staff taking care of them and teaching them and guiding them things of education, manners, uh, social cues, and even helping them find themselves as they ha never had the opportunity before, didn't have the help. Um, and I don't blame his parents. I don't blame his school that he's gone to or the community. It's very, very hard in today's world to have these programs accessible to every community, every town, every person in need. It's, it's horrible, it's sad, but it's out of our control and 
it's something that I really wish, you know, um, government would step up and really help and take care of people. You know, that's a whole nother video we can get into and in politics, but I just wish this young man had the opportunity behind bars or outside bars, but in its own facility, its own environment that specializes with people like him in similar situations like him. Because look, there is a high chance that this would have never happened if he never met Gypsy online. Sure, it, it could have been another girl, but it's the fact that I do believe him. I believe in his interrogation video, in the words that he said. He was honest, and I do think it was Gypsy's doing, where she had forced him or, you know, enticed him and encouraged it. Had a plan. Told him what to do. And some people might be upset with me for feeling that way or believing his story and his narrative, but I do. And I stand by that. He did what he did. Don't get me wrong. He needs to pay the consequence for that and fully learn and understand it. So I'm not saying he should be free, but I think he should have been given the opportunity to have a different outcome here for himself, a better structure. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm very interested and I love debates and discussing things. Whether we disagree or not, we can learn from each other. I'm Linda and that's for the record, Your Honor.